So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be looking at logarithmic differentiation. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's start off with an example. Suppose that f of x equals x to the x. And also suppose that we want to differentiate this. Well, how can we do it? This isn't a polynomial. It's not an exponential either. It's just weird. So how can we differentiate this? Well, we're going to use logarithmic differentiation. And this relies on the identity natural log of a to the b equals b times the natural log of a. Right? If we have an exponent inside the natural log, we can bring it out, as long as a is positive. And also remember uh, one thing, the derivative of the natural log of f of x for any function f is f prime of x over f of x. Right, this is going to be, this is, this is a nice formula. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to write this as y equals x to the x. Now the problem, of course, this isn't a polynomial because it has an x in the exponent. It's not an exponential because it has an x in the base also. But we can use this to bring this x from the exponent down to the same level. So we have y equals x to the x. Let's take the natural log of both sides. On the left, we get natural log of y. And on the right, we get the natural log of x to the x, which by this identity is x times the natural log of x. And now we'll differentiate both sides. We'll differentiate natural log of y, and we'll differentiate x times the natural log of x. This we can do, no problem. So on the left, we get y prime over y, right? That's this formula. And on the right, we get the derivative of x times the natural log of x, first part of the product rule, right? Because we have x times the natural log of x. So we have 1 times the natural log of x, and then plus x times the derivative of the natural log of x. So x times 1 over x. But this simplifies to be 1. So we get natural log of x plus 1. And the last step is to move y to the other side, because we're looking for f prime or y prime. So f prime of x, which is equal to y prime, is y times the natural log of x plus 1. And let's substitute the original formula for y, which is x to the x. So we get x to the x times the natural log of x plus 1. Now here, there's really no other way to differentiate this thing. But logarithmic differentiation is also useful when there are other ways, but they're just very complicated. So let's look at an example like that now. So let's suppose now that f of x is the square root of sine of x plus 4 all over e to the x plus x to the fourth. So this is not going to be fun to do using the conventional means. You have a square root of some sort of function inside, so you can have the chain rule here. There's a quotient rule involved. It's pretty complicated. But let's just call this y and use logarithmic differentiation. So we have y equals this thing. We'll take the natural log of both sides. We get natural log of y equals the natural log of this whole thing. But we can use these natural log identities to simplify this. So this 
something over something inside a natural log becomes natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. So we get the natural log of the numerator, but let's actually do something else to the numerator. We have natural log of the square root. Now square root is raising to the one-half power. And as we've seen, natural log of something to, for example, the one-half power, you can bring out the one-half power. So this is one-half times the natural log of sine of x plus 4. All right, so this is, the nat this is the same as the natural log of the square root of sine of x plus 4. It's just that we pulled that square root out front as a one-half. Now let's subtract natural log of the denominator, which is e to the x plus x to the fourth. Now we can differentiate each of these much more easily. So we differentiate both sides, remember. The left-hand side becomes y prime over y. And the right-hand side becomes 1 half times, now we have natural log of a function. So by that formula, we get the derivative of the function on top and then the original function on the bottom. So the derivative of sine of x plus 4 is cosine of x, and then we divide by whatever's inside, which is sine of x plus 4. And we'll do the same thing over here, only now we don't have to worry about a 1 half. We have minus a ratio, the derivative of what's inside, divided by simply what's inside. The derivative of what's inside is e to the x plus 4x cubed, divided by the original e to the x plus x to the fourth. So what do we have? We have f prime of x equals y prime. We solve for y prime by multiplying both sides here by y, the original function. So we have the square root of sine of x plus 4 over e to the x plus x to the fourth times this thing. So 1 half cosine x sine x plus 4 minus e to the x plus 4x cubed over e to the x plus x to the fourth. This still looks complicated, and there's really no way of getting around the complication here. But a lot of people will find this process easier than the standard one using the quotient rule, power rule, chain rule, and those things in this case. So there are two logarithmic differentiation examples.